we're going to talk a little bit about what you need to begin for soldering with hard line with uh, hard silver solder. Uh, these are some of the items here that you're going to need to gather together before you start. You got to have some rags to clean the uh, um, mess up with. You need eye protection to protect yourself. You need a reamer. You need a flux brush. It's good to have a uh, half round file here that's a rasp kind of for cleaning up the edges of the line. You need silver solder. Silver solder comes mostly in rolls these days. A long time ago we used to ship it in sticks and some of us still have some of this laying around and it'll still work uh, but they prefer you use this stuff because it's more environmentally friendly and this is what's going to be shipped to you anyway. You have to have a tape measure for measuring the line. You have to have, we use navel jelly a lot of times to clean it up. You can also use uh, muriatic acid and water. If you do, you have to use baking soda and water to neutralize it afterwards. With navel jelly, all you need to do is rinse it off real good with water and dry it. Uh, the flux that you need is the silver brazing flux, which you can get just about anywhere. It usually comes with a kit white stuff. You mix it with water and get it all soft and everything. We'll demonstrate this later as we do a flange. You need some leather gloves for rotating the line to prevent you from burning your hands. As you're putting on the navel jelly, it's a little bit acetic. You might want to wear some rubber gloves to keep it off your hands a little bit as you're cleaning the line. And of course you need the transmission line cutters. Uh, you need the large one for the outer and a smaller one for the inner. And you're also going to need oxyacetylene torch outfit because the uh, propane torches don't get hot enough to melt this type solder. It melts at about 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. And you're going to need a nice sturdy table to work on. And you're going to need a bucket of water to rinse everything off on. And that's what you use the rags for is to dry it off after you've rinsed it. If you don't wipe it off after you've rinsed it, it leaves a lot of streaks and stuff on the line. looks kind of ugly. But um, these are the things you have to have before you even begin. Most of them you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot or someplace like that if it hasn't been shipped in the toolkit with you. We normally supply the silver solder and the flux. Uh, the tools, um, some of the eye protection stuff comes with the uh, oxyacetylene torch kit, uh, sometimes not. That's why you see a pair of sunglasses here. They're good to have and safety glasses because you need eye protection. This stuff gets hot and you've only got one set of eyes so you got to take care of them. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about measuring the transmission line. First, we're going to talk about the outer measuring the transmission line for cutback for making it the right length the first time. Uh, let's assume we want to make this line 30 inches long. Now it's about 30 and a half. Uh, first thing we want to look at is we can't just measure this thing and say, oh, I'll cut it off at 30 inches because there's cut back for the flange here. Uh, what we have to allow for is in each flange, the outer comes in and seats in up to this edge here inside where the ring is. The ring snaps over the end of the line like this. And in dielectric flanges, this distance is a little bit different than it is with Myatt's. In dielectric, it's pretty much always 3 eighths of an inch. Myatt's is about 5 sixteenths. So you have to allow for that cutback to add to the length of the line as you cut it to measure it. So if we were going to make this 30 inches long and we had two flanges that were dielectric, we would have to add two times the 3 eighths of an inch in here or 3 quarters of an inch. So if we wanted to measure it then for two flanges, we would, and we want to end up with 30 inches, we want to take 30 and subtract 3 quarters of an inch 
and that makes it 29 and a quarter inches long. Plus three quarters would be 30 inches. So that's how we get our outer length when we have two EIA flanges. If we have an EIA flange on one end and a slip flange on the other, this has no cutback here. But you do have the added insulator that you have to allow for that's going to add to the length of the line. So if we wanted 30 inches, uh, we would have to allow for this extra flange on each end. If it was slip flanges on each end like this, uh, you measure this outer dimension here, which is uh, about uh, not quite a half inch, it's uh, a little bit less, more like uh, 7 sixteenths of an inch, and you would add 7 sixteenths to both ends, or 7 eighths to your length, and then if you wanted to use slip flanges on both ends, you would then measure this 7 eighths of an inch shorter than 30, or 29 and an eighth. And uh, that pretty much accounts for doing the outer with either a slip flange or an EIA flange. Uh, taking these insulators off helps you measure these bullet cutbacks a little bit for the inner, which we're going to talk about next. If we were doing an EIA inner, which is like this, we have to allow, since the bullet seat's in here, partially inside or halfway inside the flange, we have to allow for half of this distance plus all of this distance from this edge to here, and then we normally allow about another sixteenth of an inch for expansion. So the cutback for the inner on an EIA flange line is cut back for the inner is approximately mm, about uh, I think we figured it at uh, inch and five sixteenths from and allowing a little bit of space there maybe a sixteenth of an inch uh, approximately an inch and five sixteenths uh, to give us a little expansion room. So if we doubled that, we had EI flanges on both ends, we would then want two and five eighths for the total cutback of the inner to go from flange to flange, provided we had another EIA flange on this end. Now if we're doing uh, just slip flanges that butt up against the line like this, all we have to allow for cutback is from this edge to this edge right here. And that distance is approximately one inch, so if we give a little expansion room, we call it inch and sixteenths, then we have to cut our line two and uh, a quarter inches shorter than flange to flange edge <laughs> to allow the line to come out the right distance because this, here, this line fits in here and we have uh, unplanned or slip connections fits in there like that so it, it just Bounce flush. <coughs> Maybe if I hold up that end, you can see that a little better, but the slip flange and slides over that. So this is uh, adding to the outer length, but we got to cut back an inch for the inner length on each end. We're going to talk about measuring when you have two pieces of line that are some distance apart 
and let's say you have to line it up with uh, another piece that's say 10 foot away or two elbows when you go to measure you can't just go up to the thing and measure the distance like that you have to be able to rotate the elbows and measure both sides uh, and the idea is to get both sides exactly the same dimension you get the idea if you just come up here and measure one side of it uh, you don't know what the other one is you have to move back and forth and sometimes rotate back and forth till you get the dimension even if you're measuring top to bottom that doesn't really help you a whole lot because it can be higher but the top's going to be higher too so you'll get the same measurement if they're straight in line with each other but to get the distance you want to allow side to side now on three inch line you also have to remember you have this uh, on slip flanges you have this uh, extra addition here of the bullet width which is about three eighths of an inch that you have to allow for when you're measuring for the outer now for inner cutback on six inch lines normally I remove the insulator and if I want to get the cutback dimensions I measure it from this edge to this edge and if you have two of the same kind of flanges two and a half inches would be the proper cutback for this particular bullet normally I make this out to be or I'm used to calling it two and five eighths uh, which allows for expansion automatically if you allow another sixteenth of an inch for each end that gives you uh, an eighth of an inch total uh, by because you have two bullets that are two and five eighths well you have <laughs> you'll have two bullets and if you allow an eighth of an inch extra here uh, you'll end up allowing uh, two and five eighths cutback for the uh, inner okay this is the drawing of a piece of transmission line that we're going to build here today to demonstrate how to do flanges and to allow the cutbacks for both an unflanged end where you just have a slip flange that slides over and clamps down and for a field flange that needs to be hard soldered on. Uh, we'll be cutting this line to these dimensions and these are the dimensions that we have to allow for the outer conductor, what we're going to call the flange face here and the flange face here and we're going to build this as if it were an EIA flange joining to a slip flange so that we cover both cutback uh, considerations for this end and this end, which will be different. Now these dimensions are for a six inch line with dielectric components. With my components, you may have to measure and make different measurements. With a uh, three inch line, these dimensions are going to be different. Instead of seven sixteenths, this will probably be three eighths. Uh, for three inch line, this will probably be three sixteenths cut back. have to measure it first, okay? So, without much more ado, we're going to show the parts that we have laid out here to uh, make transmission line. Most items will be needed. Some items you can do without. I would encourage that you use eye protection. Uh, protect your eyes both from the light and from uh, what could be a hot metal splash. Uh, when we're using cleanup, we're going to use 3M uh, Scotch Bright to clean the line both before and afterwards, along with navel jelly. Uh, I would like to point out that I said 3M scotch Bright for a reason. The cheap Chinese stuff does not work well. It isn't rough enough, it isn't coarse enough, and it doesn't clean the line off as well. So if you've got to buy, don't scrimp. Uh, get 3M scotch Bright only because it works better than anything else out there. Uh, we're going to be using uh, hard line solder. Hard solder runs at about uh, melts at about 1600 degrees or about three times the temperature of uh, the soft solder. Uh, 
so it's, we need an oxygen acetylene torch to do that. And we're going to get into the setup of the oxygen acetylene torch fairly soon here. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about the uh, type of equipment that you need to hold the line in place. A workmate is pretty handy for short pieces. If you got two of them, you're a lot better off. <laughs> Uh, this is an old one that I brought in from home. Uh, for cutting the line, this works pretty well. For soldering flanges on, it helps to have two of these roller assemblies made up. And they don't have to be welded like this one is. They can just be bolted together and set them on a, a uh, workmate, clamp them like this. And for longer pieces of line, you can use these rollers to help you spin the line. Especially if you got somebody back here on the other end, or you can roll them by hand if you got two of them and, uh, as you're soldering. Cutting, uh, you're better off without these rollers because as you spin your cutter around, the line's going to want to turn with it. So better off without them for cutting, but they really are handy for soldering. So without much further ado, we're going to take this back out and set up for measuring the piece of line that we need to make to the dimensions that we have on that paper. Okay, we've previously determined that our outer line cut to make this piece of line needs to be 30 inches uh, flange to flange face so if we subtract the 3 8 of an inch for the cut back here that is going to be in the flange and the uh, 7 16 that's going to be added at the end of the line here for the bullet then we come up with 29 and 3 16 inch total length that we need for the transmission line. I'd like to point out again that 3 8 length measurement comes from this edge to this edge which uh, you know, we can kind of demonstrate that here We have three inches from the place where the line seats to the flange face. And we have to allow for that extra length. Okay. So, 29 and 3 16 We come over here. And as we measure this, I like to mark it on both sides of the tape measure. And the reason for doing this is so that we can check our progress as we go around the line uh, and make sure we're cutting it all square. If it isn't cut all square, it isn't going to work. So I usually do this in about four places. We've pre-done this here and marked it already. Our ultimate goal is to end up with a piece of line that is within a sixteenth of an inch of what our plan is. Because any further out than that, or if it's out of square, it's not going to work. <laughs> this line is pretty hard and it doesn't stretch. <laughs> okay, we're going to line up our cutter here on our line, tighten it down. You want to get uh, this good and square. And the ultimate goal is to have it come back around 
and line up with the very line we started with. And uh, you want to do that early. You don't want to work it back and forth too much. And then you want to come all the way around. And I found that it works better to follow, let the uh, cutter follow the rollers around rather than <laughs> mm -hmm. the other way around where the roller leads. Now, as you go around, you have to tighten up a little bit each time, and it takes a little while to cut through a six inch piece of line because it's about a tenth of an inch thick. <laughs> At least a sixteenth, anyway. get rid of <coughs> our ridges. You have a ridge on the inside and you have a little ridge on the outside. That ridge on the outside will prevent your flange from sliding over it easy unless you file it off. For the inside ridge we use a ridge reamer. You can buy these at Home Depot or Lowe's. It does a real nice job of taking off the lip on the inside. For the outside, a half round file is a good thing to have in your toolbox for you can also do the inside of the line with the half round and the flat side you have to rotate around and take off this little lip I don't know maybe a little bit of scotch right on there yeah you really can't see that lip very well but it, believe me, it's there. <laughs> Some guys like to wear gloves to do in this. Might prevent a cut or two. Careful. Won't need them. Not used to working with tools, I highly recommend it though. Now we're going to clean the edge up so that we can solder the flange on. That's where the Scotch Bright comes in to shine the line up. It only needs to be cleaned about a half an inch back, but I usually end up cleaning it about an inch. This is the end we're going to solder the flange on. kind of dirty in there. We want to make sure that we clean it up as well. Where the line is going to go. And you will notice there is a silver soldered ring in here already. That's going to help us out 
when we go to solder in the line the idea is you clean it first then the flux don't have so much work to do and you'll get a better joint okay now we can dry fit that first and we want to look and make sure that we're good and square all the way around if I cut with square it should be pretty decent this one is okay next comes the flux and the flux doesn't need to be everywhere you just need a little more than three-eighths of an inch something like a half inch works fine and it does need to be all the way around A friend of mine once told me solder runs better in the presence of flux. And he was right. He got flux all over that flange. And guess where the solder went? All over that flange. <laughs> We're also going to put some inside here. And we don't want to get a bunch of it on the outside because we don't need solder there. Most of the time you're going to be doing this, it's going to be hot outside. You don't want to wait till this stuff dries because it's almost impossible to put it on there when it dries hard. Okay. Now that flange is ready to solder on. Uh, and next we're going to move to our torch. We could solder it horizontally if we had it able to roll it. So for now we're going to talk about setting up the gauges. This being a small set, we got them up on the table here. And the first thing we want to set up is the oxygen. We'll open up the valve here. Oxygen being the green one. We want to set the pressure for somewhere between, and it's hard to do on this gauge, uh, five to seven pounds. So we want that to be a constant five to seven pounds. So we're going to adjust this. Yeah, approximately seven pounds on that gauge. Now we're going to do the acetylene. The acetylene got a little different valve on it on this bottle. Acetylene normally you just crack open. I would like to say that about the acetylene uh, you don't ever want to lay these bottles down and leave them horizontal for any length of time because the gas in there is absorbed by another chemical or rock if you will <laughs> acetone and acetylene has a pressure limit of 15 psi if you go above this red line there's a good chance that it will explode especially with heat so uh, we want to run about three pounds of acetylene on here 
and we're going to set our gauge. We're about three pounds. Any further danger, we're going to set this uh, torch down where if it gets knocked over, it won't break the bottles off. Normally these things would be in a dolly and chained in. Uh, this is a small set that I brought from home and it's not really big enough to do much of a job. <laughs> but for our purpose, I think it'll be enough. So, typically when I'm doing a short piece of line, I'm gonna do it vertically on a concrete block something that ain't going to catch fire as I heat it up. This is what the solder looks like that you're going to get. Generally going to come in a little plastic thing like that, and we need to use some just to get things started. I usually straighten it out a little bit so I've got something I can feed with. That should be plenty to do one flange. When we get done with our flange, uh, we're going to use this water to cool it off a little bit. Uh, this pipe is going to be very hot. As we heat the uh, line up, I'm going to try to keep the heat mostly on the pipe and let it bounce off and hit the flange. Uh, the pipe is a lot bigger piece of metal it's going to take a lot more heat on the pipe than it will on the flange. So if you're just heating the flange, chances are you'll warp it before you ever get the solder to run. So it's best to keep a little heat fairly far up the pipe to start with. Uh, I'm going to try to do this with two pair of glasses here. <laughs> so okay. gauge is already set up. thing I'd like to point out before we get started on this torch set is that these tips have seals in here and you can almost always on a Victor type pull those back and inspect those seals to make sure that they're in good shape before you uh, screw it onto there because the seal don't ain't good the torch ain't gonna work right turn on the gas We're going to pack this line in about three places. Once we get it warm enough, we solder the line. Because as you go around the line, if you start in one place and go around, you're going to end up.
inch line, you don't need to do this on. But six inch and above, uh, the bigger it is, the more places you need to pack it. If you're doing a 10 inch piece of line and you don't pack it, you're going to end up with a quarter inch gap down here in this pack. And that's not a gap. <laughs> on all the way around. Let this cool naturally or we can dunk it in water a little bit and you've got to grab it pretty far up because that pipe's going to be damn hot down here and sink it a little bit at a time. travels right up this pipe. You want them to have gloves on if you're doing this because there's a lot of heat there. And we're going to let that cool a little bit. I'm going to speed the process a little bit by um, running some water up the sides of this pipe. See, it's still plenty hot. And it's plenty hot up here, too. <laughs> At this point in time, the other end is probably cooler than this end. <laughs> Okay, now we've got a pretty nasty looking line. 
we don't have to we want to look and see it how much run through we had here so the more heat you put on it and the more you try to run solder in there the more run through you can get if you get very much in there it becomes a VSWR bump and you want to take your half round and kind of file it out a little bit which we will do and remember that bullets got to seat up against this edge so you don't want any down in there Now, now comes enable jelly. I like using this stuff better than the uh, muriatic acid because you get a cleaner job when you're done. It is a lot messier to do. As you're doing this, you want to be inspecting this so that you don't have any air gaps in there. Uh, a lot of times you have air gaps, you might be in a place where you have to put your line into a pressurized situation. And if you have air gaps in there, you got a pretty good chance of it leaking air. That won't be good. I should have pointed out, and meant to point out, before you start to cut the line, you want to examine it and make sure there's no dents or dings in it anywhere because the worst thing you can do is go to all this work and then have a dented line. <laughs> okay, we're starting to look pretty good on the outside. We also have to do the inside. At least where we discolored it, anyway. And we want to make sure we get this flange face because this little lip here is what makes the ground. This little small ridge here uh, makes the ground connection between flanges. Now we're going to take this and put it in the water, rinse all the snavel jelly off. Now I'm going to do something. I'll wipe this off a little bit because I don't want that getting on there again. I'm messing up my nice finish. <laughs> that up out of there you want to dry it off or quit running water on it whatever you however you're cleaning it otherwise you'll end up with all these streaks okay if our measurement was right and our cut was right we should end up with a 30 inch piece from that bullet face to the flange face and there we have it and after all the measurements we've come up with I'm going to make this one 27 and 3 16 One of the important things about all of this is I usually like to make a little drawing like that for every piece of line that I'm going to cut because that way you get the idea of what all is involved in every one. 
and it gives you an opportunity to check for mistakes. So now that we have this one marked where we're going to cut it, we're going to take it over here and put it on our cutting device. You need to consider on the job you're going out on what size cutters you got to have. This is about the minimum size or maximum maximum size cutter you could use to cut the inner for six inch. Otherwise, I'd normally want about a three inch cutter. The inner is a lot thinner. Dielectric is thinner than Myatt. You don't want to go too much at a time or you'll cause a big lip on the edge of it. And once again we have a really sharp edge in here that we have to take off. Remove all that lip. There's going to be a lip out here and we want to get that taken off too if for no other reason than to save our hands from getting cut handling it. Inner line needs to be cleaned up on the inside to get a nice connection to the bullet. It's not cleaned up, you may have a VSWR problem. Expect the line for being clean. I'm going to get all the copper filings and everything out. Generally, when we don't have an insulator in the middle of the line, we can run a rag through there. This one uh, has an insulator in it, you can't see all the way through it. So. Just want to make sure it's cleaned up. Now we're going to put this piece of line in here after we put the insulator back in. back to the inner to allow for our expansion plus our one inch distance from where's our other bullet <laughs> our one inch distance from from uh, right here to right here you can see the eighth of an inch here that we have now for expansion of the line when it heats up And, as we said before, our overall length, 30 inches. Could 